It's the well-worn phrase that's kicked off every major Samsung smartphone launch for the past three years. But this year, the next big thing is actually worth the hype. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the Samsung Galaxy S6, brought to you by Squarespace. Every so often, a product comes along that you pick up and don't ever want to put down. The Galaxy S6 is one of these, and picking it up is important, because without the context of touch, it's easy to confuse the S6 for one of its predecessors, a slightly rounded rectangle with a big screen and a big home button. It's only by holding it that you grasp its significance. This is like no Samsung that's come before it, not the industrial alpha, nor the leatherette note, nor the plasticky Ative. This is something entirely different. The Galaxy S6 is a slim sandwich of glass and aluminum, less than 7 millimeters thick and much more substantial in the hand than its 138 grams would suggest. There's not a trace of compromise to be found in the fit and finish. Everything from the corner seams to the button travel and feedback is top-notch. The phone is available in several colors. We tested both white pearl and black sapphire in our nine-day review period, with the latter picking up fingerprints much more readily than the former. And despite the creative color name, it's not sapphire material, it's Gorilla Glass 4. Also, regardless of color, it's a slippery phone, prone to sliding off crooked tabletops. If you're a Butterfingers, you may want to consider a case. Spec, for example, sent us a bunch to try out. The case for a case is bolstered by the protruding camera bump on the back, begging to be shattered with a too hard drop on a too tough surface. The Galaxy S6 has such a beautiful design, though, that it seems a shame to cover it up, especially since we've so rarely been able to say that about Samsung phones in the past. While upping its game in industrial design, the company hasn't forgotten to play to its main strength, display manufacturing. This year's Quad HD Super AMOLED panel is sharper than ever, its black levels and contrast excellent, its saturation rich but adjustable based on your preferences. It can still overpower to around 600 nits in bright sunlight, or crank way down to almost nothing in a dark room. Annoyingly, this time around the dim setting is sabotaged by the two bright capacitive keys at the bottom. For some reason, the timeout controls have been removed, meaning they always light up with every screen interaction, and there's nothing you can do about it. Put your thumb on the home button in the middle, and you'll see another of Samsung's many improvements. The new fingerprint sensor is leaps and bounds better than the cumbersome swipe jobs of previous generations, getting you past the lock screen just as quickly as the best of the competition. The other side of the lock screen is where Samsung has fallen short for the past few years, spending more time on useless or half-finished features while letting its interface aesthetics stagnate. And at first glance, with its goofy icons and garish colors, the new software doesn't seem all that different. But shaking things up is just a long press away. Like HTC, Samsung has introduced full theming capability to its latest flagship, allowing you to change everything from icon packs to system sounds to wallpapers to accent colors with the swipe of a finger. At the moment, the theme store is pretty barren, but already I've found a couple that work with my particular sense of style. And I really like that the theme changes extend to almost every corner of the OS, including places like the notification shade and SMS chat windows. Whether you run a custom theme or not, there's a market improvement in responsiveness and a more intelligent layout overall. Continuing a trend that began last year, Samsung has culled or buried many extraneous features, resulting in a faster experience in day-to-day -day use. The last out-of-place elements from the old Nature UX have been removed, and you can now swipe on the stock keyboard for precision cursor placement. Multi-window, one of Samsung's biggest standouts, is still better here than on any competitor phone, supporting a long list of apps capable of running side by side. With its direct access to the phone's onboard blood oxygen and heart rate sensor, S Health is more capable than ever, and better laid out too. Even the flipboard powered newsreader is snappier than it once was. Not all the changes here will be welcome. 
The replacement of overflow icons with the word more takes some getting used to, and that, combined with some of the industrial design and the parallax effect on the wallpaper, makes the S6 seem like it's trying a little too hard to be something else. Then there's the matter of how well the software performs in real life, which we'll get to in a second. But I want to wrap up this section with my favorite software feature of the S6, the reason I don't have a camera shortcut on my home screen anymore. Double-click the home button, and you'll find yourself almost instantly in the viewfinder. That viewfinder is a welcome improvement over earlier, kludgier builds. Automatic settings are available so the phone can decide for itself if it needs to turn on night mode or activate HDR, and you can also preview HDR effects before taking a photo. A handful of shooting modes are available out of the box, with others available to download, and there's a pro setting for manual adjustments too. My favorite sort of fun feature is probably Virtual Shot, which allows you to combine multiple angles of an object into one faux 3D photo. The best feature of the Galaxy S6 camera, though, is that it doesn't rely on gimmicks to kick out beautiful photos. The 16-megapixel sensor delivers outstanding pictures, whether the subjects are hundreds of feet distant or mere millimeters away. The HDR effect brings highlights to the dark zones with only a minimum of color washout. Back in standard mode, colors are sometimes a little punched up, a little on the warm side, but I find that the saturation boost helps more often than it hurts. Importantly, it doesn't mean blues and greens are lost. On the contrary, the S6 has no trouble rendering the cooler side of the spectrum. And where, at sundown, you better take care with other phones, this camera's f1.9 aperture and optical stabilization combine to pull out a lot of light without the need for the harsh LED flash. Color reproduction wanders further into the yellow-green area of the spectrum the darker the scene gets, but this is still one of the best low-light performers we've seen on Android. Combine that with the front-facing camera and its wide-angle lens, and the still side of the scene is pretty well covered. The Galaxy S6 brings a lot of capability to its camcorder mode, too. But, as the man said, don't take my word for it. The worst part of the camera experience over the review period wasn't the camera's fault at all. It happened when the viewfinder crashed immediately when I tried launching it, and it wasn't an isolated occurrence. App crashes have been fairly common over the past week, and while a recent software update has helped a bit, it didn't completely eliminate the problem, and given how poorly some Samsung software has aged over the years, it does give me pause. Now, this isn't necessarily a Samsung issue. Like the slight delay in calling up the multitasking screen and the occasional unaccountable lag, Android Lollipop is just funky sometimes, no matter what phone you're using. But it is frustrating when you're in the middle of something and you're interrupted by a notification that an app you didn't even want installed and didn't even know was running has crashed. Now, some of the blame does fall at T-Mobile's feet for this. Uninstalling or disabling the carrier bloat that comes with the phone does help to a degree. Still, put all that together and it's not a great experience. Ditto for Android's too aggressive memory management. You'd think a phone with 3 gigs of RAM could manage to keep a radio streaming app loaded in memory after taking a quick video with the camera, but sadly that's not the case. Elsewhere, Samsung's in-house silicon seems to stack up. While the Exynos processor warms up the hardware with a quickness, it does a fine job rendering even heavy websites in either Chrome or the stock internet browser and it runs games like Asphalt 8 about as well as the Snapdragon 810 does. You've just got to be careful not to squeeze the S6 too hard in those stressful moments, lest your palm activate the capacitive keys and kick you out of the game. And you'll want to keep your fingers clear of the bottom-firing speakerphone port, too. When it's wide open, it's a formidable little driver, but it's easy to cover up by accident. What about the much-belabored lack of a memory card slot and removable battery? I only really miss one of them. Expandable storage has been increasingly marginalized by other Android OEMs and by Google itself, and with the S6 available with up to 128 gigs of admittedly pricey onboard storage, I don't think many people will miss microSD. On the other hand, 
It would have been really nice if Samsung had managed to retain a swappable battery so we could carry a spare around. Despite usually lasting me through the day, our Galaxy S6 never managed to hit four hours of screen on time between charges, our unofficial benchmark for acceptability. But the phone does include support for both leading wireless charging standards, and it's also one of the fastest charging smartphones we've ever tested, with an adaptive quick charger right in the box that juices it up from dead to a half charge in about a half hour. So whether you can live with its endurance will depend on how often you can top up. And there's also some question about T-Mobile units performing differently from other carrier variants. See our full review at Pocket Now for more on this. Finally, the Galaxy S6 is also a phone, of course. And aside from its seams occasionally snagging the hair around my ears, something the iPhone 6 also does, it's a very good phone. Its antennas hanging onto T-Mobile signal both above and below ground in Greater Boston, and its earpiece adroitly walking the line between loudness and clarity. The Galaxy S6 itself walks another line well, the one between changing things up and sticking with what works. Samsung has kept the physical aspect familiar, but upgraded it so it now looks and feels like the premium hardware it is. It's kept the software accessible, but also made it customizable so users can more easily make the phone their own. And it's thrown in the best camera and arguably the best display ever to hit a smartphone. It's not without its compromises and it won't be for everyone but the Galaxy S6 is one of the best Android phones you can buy in 2015. And it's probably the best Samsung smartphone in history. To us, that makes it worth every penny. This review was brought to you by Squarespace and its new version 7 drag and drop UI. Squarespace is the all-in-one solution that makes it fast and easy to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Visit squarespace.com slash pocket now for your free trial and up to 10% off. You'll be getting a good deal and showing your support for Pocket Now while you're at it. Squarespace. Start here. Go anywhere. For more on the Galaxy S6, be sure to check out our full written review at Pocket Now, available April 8th, and see our comparisons with the HTC One M9 and the iPhone 6 right here on YouTube. This review was conducted using two units purchased from T-Mobile US. We'll update this review if and when Samsung sends us a review device. Subscribe so you don't miss future features, and please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, reminding you that sometimes redemption is only one cycle away. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.